Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that we're going to talk about today is something that happened yesterday, right in the middle of the day. Sensitive places took one right in the goods when a federal judge said post offices can no longer be sensitive places or gun bans be federal building. Okay, this is incredibly important. This is part of the nuance of going against uh, sensitive places, where we can carry guns, where we can have Second Amendment, and also what is history, text, and tradition, and more Bruin destroying gun control that's been in place for around 50 to 60 years. Everything will be linked in the description box below, and I can't wait to hear from you guys on this one. And of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. All right, my brothers and sisters, we are part of the culture war. We are in the 2A division, and we know that restraining the rights of the legal enhances the power of the criminal. Those two things aligning into the culture are going to help us bridge this gap and bring people to our side. That's why we did the shirts that you just saw. That's why we are making this huge push into the culture area of our fight. And thank you for that support. But let's dive into this. People, beautiful people, lovely people of <laughs> Langley Outdoors, check this out. Ban on guns in post offices is unconstitutional U.S. judge rules. Now, of course, this is much bigger than post offices. Okay, Originally, the news that post offices are now ruled unconstitutional for gun bans is kind of like, a okay, post offices. What's the deeper underlying story there? Yeah, that's where the sweetness is. Because if you look at what they've done now with a federal judge basically saying banning firearms in a uh, post office is unconstitutional because there's no history, text, or tradition, Bruin decision, you start to ask questions about what other federal buildings. That is right smack dab in the middle of sensitive places because that's what the left has done. They've gone sensitive places all over the place, and they've said, this is sensitive, that's sensitive. You can't carry your gun. You can have a permit, but you can't carry that gun there. This is another nail in that coffin. Let me show you what they did here. Again, this broke yesterday, but this, I haven't seen anyone hit this angle yet, so this is pretty good. A federal judge in Florida on Friday ruled that the U.S. law that bars people from possessing firearms in post offices is unconstitutional, citing the Bruin decision. U.S. District Judge Catherine Kimball Mazel, an appointee of Republican former President Donald Trump in Tampa. Oh, my goodness. By the way, side note, ever notice that whenever something favorable happens for gun rights, they always say exactly who... Uh, who appointed them? Anyway, little observation. Reached that conclusion in dismissing part of the indictment charging a postal worker with illegally possessing a gun in a federal facility. Now, of course, this has been one of the big pushes of the DOJ. The, you could say deep state, but that's not really what we're talking about. What you're really talking about is the centralized government does not want guns on their federal, federal property unless it's their guns. That's essentially what they're doing. Okay, The big thing here Again, not post offices. The post office just happens to be one of the locations. The big thing here is if post offices are unconstitutional to ban uh, firearms, what is now also unconstitutional? Understand, as these things continue and federal judges are doing this following the Bruin decision, you're going to see a smacking down just like this across the board of lots of gun regulations like this that have been in place for 50 and 60 years that are unconstitutional and then you're going to see the doj push back on the other side so there's going to be a little bit of a seesaw effect imagine imagine what the left has always done right if you put it on a spectrum what they're doing and i'm trying to make this point really really uh, crystal clear let me know if i land this the left they ask for something extreme right in gun control for example and they say i want to ban all guns and then the Republicans or the conservatives or the gun right advocates would say no 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 that's too extreme we're not doing that no bad bad leftist, right? Then they'll go, okay, fine. We'll just settle for mag bans. And then the, le the Republicans typically will be like, okay, glad we negotiated you away from that insane, insane point. This is kind of like that. If you've got all these federal buildings that are going to be now on limit, they're a green light, then the left is going to say, no, no, you can't do that. And it's going to end up closer to the middle. That's, I hope I landed that. That, that seemed kind of good, but also weird. Anyway, let me know. But let's continue here because I want to show you what they're saying because the, the key phrases here are incredibly important. 
Mazel said that charge violated Emanuel Aiello's rights to keep and bear arms under the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment, saying, quote, a blanket restriction on firearms possession in post offices is incongruent with the American tradition of firearms regulation. Now, that's, of course, history, text, and tradition. That's alluding to the Bruin decision. That's the power of the Bruin decision as we go through time, right? But Here's where it gets really interesting because she brings in some actual evidence to her point. Check this out. Mizell said that while post offices have existed since the nation's founding, that's the history text, so they, that's been the thing, federal law did not bar guns in government buildings until 1964 and post offices until 1972. No historical practice dating back to the 1700s justified the ban, she said. That's the point. That's what the left has been struggling with. They can't find historical analogs because it was unconstitutional. It was so close to the founding of our nation that they wouldn't go near it. Well, now we faded 200 years this way, and it's like, oh, well, or 300 years this way. It's kind of, uh, you know, yeah, maybe we could be safe for the common sense for the children, right? That's the point. We're going back to a standard of originality. That is what we're dealing with right here. Now, Mazel said allowing the federal government to restrict visitors from bringing guns into government facilities as a condition of admittance would allow it to, quote, abridge the right to bear arms by regulating it into practical non-existence. And isn't that exactly what we've seen from the left over the last 20, 30, 40 years? They want to regulate a right out of existence, utilizing the power of their bureaucracies. They want to basically make it so difficult for you to have this particular right that you just don't do it yourself. They don't say, oh... Yeah, you know, we can't. We're, you know, you can have your guns, but uh, and we won't tell you you can't. But it's gonna. You have to do this, 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 this. How long until it becomes too expensive, too prohibitive, too time constraining? How long until you just stop doing it? And that's what they're betting on. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.